In this video, we're going to demonstrate um, bilateral distal type 1B endoleaks. This is a previously placed excluder in which for CT scan we could demonstrate that there was a leak around the distal end. Here we're looking at the right side. Patient had an elevated creatinine, and so we're actually using CO2 here, although it's kind of difficult to uh, be absolutely sure. All you really need to know is where the hypogastric is coming off, so give it a little bit of dye. The plan is, uh, number one, is there enough room to put in the bell bottom, this contralateral leg end of prosthesis that's shown with the yellow arrow. And once you insert it in the graft, it kind of looks like uh, the fully assembled system you know, on the right. So first step is you've got to catheterize, make sure the wire goes up inside. And then we put this bell bottom end of prosthesis. You're landing it short of the internal iliac artery. And then we're going to go up, back up there with a the balloon. You can actually use a coda balloon. Um, or 16 balloon, um, but you really might need a coda, something big basically to tack up the, the, the distal end of this. So here we're doing the overlap zone, sequentially moving this on down. And you can see how it flares out uh, and accommodating the uh, distal end of the bell bottom. Here it looks like it may still be a little bit of an end of leak there. And so we're going to come back in with a bigger balloon uh, and hit it a little bit harder and see if we can get that to seal up. If you can't get it to seal, then you're either going to have to embolize it, you're going to have to convert this into an iliac, um, an iliac branch graft, uh, but that actually seemed to do the trick. Attention then turned really to the opposite side where uh, we've got a similar problem. Now the question is why does this occur? It either occurs because the graft to start off with was undersized, or if we're being benevolent, may say that the iliacs have kind of gotten bigger. So again, first step, you spin the catheter, make sure that you're actually inside the lumen, switch out now to a stiff wire. And over the stiff wire, we're going to bring up the uh, sheath. You see this patient has had multiple injections basically into the lumbar vertebra for osteoporosis. Uh, what's now happening is we're bringing up a stiff wire and bringing the sheath up inside the uh, left iliac limb. Once we remove the uh, dilator for the sheath, you're going to pull that back down and so we can tag exactly where the origin of the hypogastric is. Here we're doing it again with CO2. And then we're going to bring the device. And now most of these devices will go up pretty nicely without their, having to re-advance the sheath. In this case, you'll see, and you always watch for this, it's catching in the bottom end of the iliac limb. So then you're going to take it back out and you put the dilator back in the sheath. Even here, you can see you probably need a little bit more stiff wire up there. It looks like that had come back a little bit. Readvance the wire. Now the sheath is up inside the left iliac limb. And we're going to position the uh, device. And of course, we're working off two screens so we know where the hypogastric is. The device has been deployed. Uh, once again, we're going to balloon this. Here you can see even the balloon is catching. Um, so once again, you go through the same kind of rigmarole, bring the, the balloon out, uh, put the dilator inside the sheath, re-advance the sheath inside the limb, and then you can bring up the um, balloon inside the sheath where it's protected. So balloon's brought up. Once again, you're going to do the overlap zones and the seal zone distally. You can always tell where it expands up beyond the iliac limb uh, into the more aneurysmal portion of the iliac cautery. And then a completion angiogram. In this case, I'm with CO2, hypogastric present. No obvious end leak. Obviously, you've got to follow this patient up. Always a challenge when the patient has an elevated cranium how to follow these patients, but uh, thank you for watching this.